Okay, guys, I have no idea where I left off last night, but I ran out this morning and picked up the number 19 concealer because it's got a little bit more pink in it. And I got myself um, the same color because one of my friends, I did her eyes and she took everything from me. So I'm going to go in with this. It's called Perk. And this is the color corrector. And the really important thing about using a color corrector is that you're only correcting where you can see the shadow or the discoloration. You want to do that because if you do the whole entire thing, it's still going to show as darker when you put the concealer on. I'm going like into here because I have like a little trough here. And then I go a little dark over here. Do the same thing. And I'm literally just going where it's dark. I am going to try to get the bruise again today. Wow, that bruise is like taking forever. Okay, and so there's, I want to say three of, of these different shades. One is more on the pink side, which is this one. One is a little more peachy, orangey color. And one of them has a lot more red in it. Okay, so I color corrected only where I had darkness. And then I'm just going to press this in. The heat of my finger, even though my fingers actually feel cold right now, I guess the heat on my face will help get the product where it needs to go. And already, this is a huge difference. I'm going to turn this light on a little bit lower. So I want to really take a look at where those shadows are. Like over here, I have a lot of darkness. Here. Not where it's puffed, but where it is dark. Okay. Makes you look like a crazy person for a minute. But then you put the magic on. And this is the concealer. I had number 20 and... It was a, not quite pink enough for my skin. So I switched to this color that has a cool pink undertone. And wow, that's a good match for me, especially in a light, bright area. Okay, yesterday I used the Angie Hot and Flashy A506, and I'm not breaking any spells here. So I'm literally just going to go in on my whole under eye now. Because we've done the color correcting, which means that as we go over that entire area, not just your skin color, but also the color corrector color come together as one and you will see a very very different look even with this one with just the corrector on it you can see like this looks so much better i'm gonna go on this side might need a little bit more 
We'll see. The whole thing is that you want to use as little amount of the product as you possibly can for it to continue looking natural and not crazy made up. So go slow. Take your time. First time you've done it. You're sometimes going to want to go into this inner part of the eye where you get some darkness. That's why we always do like a, an inner corner highlight for most people. And sometimes you just don't really want to wear makeup, but you also don't want to go out looking like a complete train wreck and that you have finally hit that point in your life where you're willing to go out looking that bad. Yeah, this is all you need to feel really secure again. That's just amazing. Okay, I'm going to pull my hair back because I would like to color correct my sun damage again. But I would like to do it. That was not even my dog barking. It's another dog. Okay. So when I look in the mirror at my face, number one, this side of my face, I don't know if it's because I sleep on this side or just lucky, I have more texture, more things hanging. Just don't love it. I'm going to go where I'm discolored. And I'm also just going to put a little here where I have the crease and here. Your face is not the same color everywhere. See that? Just going where the shadows are. Okay, we're going to blend this out. A little bit more concealer. Okay. Now, what I think is going to happen is we're going to get a really nice correction. And we're going to be perfectly prepped for foundation and using a very small amount of foundation. Foundation for me is for evening skin tone. For concealing, that's like where the work is. If you do your under, the things underneath, or even over, if, if you don't like the way it looks, it's so much easier. That was pretty fast. Really nice. Okay, so this past week we played with the new Shiseido Revital Essence Glow, and that is what we're going to use today. Hello. I think my dog was trying to get in. He opens doors. It's like a whole thing. We'll get into that at some point. He knows when a door is locked also. Oh gosh. Okay, the thing about this foundation that you need to know right away is that a lot comes out at one time and you have to be really careful and this has happened to me a few times now. It is a runny consistency, if you don't remember. Might be like easier to see with something behind it. So it runs. It's a little bit on the 
stamp side. Just get my Sonia G Jumbo base. And it says to start from the outside or from the inside and blend out. And as you can see, I can still color correct some of my sunspots. I'm going to have to stop for a second if the vacuum is going to be on. Hopefully I'll be able to edit it out. Okay, that's amazing. All right, now we're going to go in on a couple of those sun damage spots that drive me nuts. Over here. On here. I feel like we're going to be playing like connect the dots. This is, I hate this one. This one drives me crazy. Makes my eyebrow look like bizarre. Try to get that little bruise again. Okay, those are like the main, I would say, sun damage areas that bother me. We all have different things that bother us. Some people are bothered by this. Some people are not. It could go either way, but if I can hide it easily and quickly. Okay. All right, so we're going to go in just on top of those areas where we did the color correcting. And I'm still using that same brush that just seems to be like made for this. And I'm just going in with the foundation. Really cannot believe. The difference. It's incredible. When you do this kind of concealing, you wind up using so much less product and you look so much less makeup y and so much more human, but not tired human. You look like a person that doesn't lose sleep. Okay, thirsty. Okay. I don't even know what to say at this point. This is incredible. She was talking about how she purposefully picked this copper color because uh, there's so many other metals out there that represent other things and there's so many colors in the middle and copper represents that she wanted something with the beautiful lettering so it could be kind of millennial looking i just think that women are killing it these days with business and with all of the areas that have been needing change are finally starting to get some change. Now, what I'm hoping for is this will also begin to include the crazy ageism that happens in the beauty space. I'm invisible at this point. I'm going to curl my lashes while I'm thinking about it. 
This is just the rougher. Okay. Okay. I am going to go over now my face with just with a, a puff to make sure that I don't have any extra product that needs to come off. There's nothing on here. It's perfectly clean. This foundation is absolutely gorgeous. I, it's like, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love it with this concealer and with this corrector. It is so incredible to feel like you look less tired. I love it. What a fantastic product. And I, I think this is going to go viral. I can't see how the whole world isn't going to want to do this. What are your thoughts, guys? I mean, I certainly have sun damage still showing, and I could go after it all just doing tons of pinpoint canceling of all that stuff, but I think if you get the big areas and you smooth the under eye area, I think that you've kind of won. And I think that you don't need to cover everything where it looks like a mask because that was very aging also. All right. I Okay, so I'm just going in with the pink shade from the Chanel Peru Crystal. So this is the one, let me take these little guys out. This is the one that has the cooler tones and we have a, a blue pearl here, very light pale blue. I have to say this gold stuff looks, I don't know, it would not have been a choice that I would have made. If they had done it just even just made it that color like flat i understand like you know how they wanted to make it look really authentic but if you're gonna go for it go for it and don't stick it on and make it look like a bunch of tin foil that you painted gold and smushed on top of a palette it doesn't feel like luxury to me i am literally just taking this pink shade and using it to give myself a fake crease, pull out from the sides. And that was using another Angie Hatton Flashy 503. These brushes, you guys, they're incredible. Every time I go to reach for one, it's right there where I need it. Take a little bit of this peachier color and go on this inner part of my lid. It's just like a, a nice little brightening effect. Again, with that more awake look that I think we all really love. I'm going to take a tiny little bit of this and just blend up here to blend out the pink. And the whole thing is that you just don't want to have any harsh lines that anybody can see where one color stops and another one begins. You just kind of want to create a situation where everything blends together going in with the lighter peach shade underneath my whole eye. This is a Scott Barnes brush that's like a mini fan and I love it and I'm 
really hoping that with his new rebrand that he brings his brushes back because there are a few of them that I really have found to be in, in, indispensable. I cannot talk today. So this is a little bit of the pink underneath. And we've got just like a very nice beginning here. Okay, now I'm going to take a smaller brush. This is the A504. And I am going into this brown color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick it out so that when I have my mascara on, I have a little bit of a darker area out in the corner over here. And you can see that I'm building almost a, a triangular shape. And you can take your brush and you can pat it in here. Just making sure that you're getting that real swoop out because it really elongates the eye and then over here same thing just wing out and I do love these Chanel shadows I was back and forth on picking them up. This is the only quad I picked up in the foursome for, for that Byzantine group. I think having used it and tried it, I think this is the perfect color story for me. I think somebody with warmer skin tones, I think that they would have done great. Sorry, this is so bright right now. Um, I think that the warmer tones would look really, really good on somebody that doesn't have a pink undertone, but these are just so perfect. And now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to go into the light blue shade, that pearl. I think you can see that. Really, really beautiful. And what I want to do is I want, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not giving anybody the finger here. Usually I don't use my middle finger, but I wanted a nice amount in the center. And I'm going in with my other finger on my other hand because I really think that when you go in the opposite way you angle differently and you end up getting a different look. So I've learned how to use fingers from both sides. <laughs> okay. I like that. And I think I want to really concentrate some brightness at the lash line since my eye is so hooded, that'll be what's really peeking out. like that. Pick a little bit more of the pink. And that's just such a pretty, soft, easy look. And I curled my lashes, but they don't look like they were curled. They look like they were curled by a monster or something. <laughs> All right, let's let's try Surat since Ruffer didn't seem to do it for me today. These are my two favorite curlers in the world. Oh yeah, it's amazing, right? The difference of your eye looking open. from curling it's it's one of the easiest things that you can do to make your eyes look really open 
Okay, I'm going to try a more neutral color than I normally use. This one is, the I love these Sephora, these twist up lip liners. They're like the best kept secret. This one's called Dress to the 90s. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a shadow up here. Going just a little bit above. And a little bit below. Just to give myself like some general shape. Oh, it's got a built-in sharpener also. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to start out now with khakis. Collaboration with Finding Ferdinand. This is the color Latte. And it is just a delightful formula to put on. It's like a whisper of beige. Which is exactly what I want right now because I don't want anything competing with this eye. Obviously, we're going to use more than one blush because I'm me. Well, we're going to start with that. That looks really good. Like it. I like it a lot. I might want to go leave in a little bit darker. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to have like that kind of blurred shadowy thing going on my lips. And then the other thing I wanted to use, this is the Givenchy Prism Libre brush in number two Taffeta's Rose. Thought this would be perfect because it's peach and pink, just like this Chanel eyeshadow. And I just, for some reason, really like taking it very, very close to my eye. And I know that some people were saying that they didn't like these, they were too messy, blah, blah, blah. I have not had one problem with these. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to, like, drag it around with me in my purse and let, you know, the powder get all over the place. But I think that's a pretty easy application. And then all you have to do is make sure that when you put it back in, it's pressed down. And then you can... This part has to go down, and then it just clicks, and it's super easy. Okay, love that. I'm going to put on some contour from Miss Victoria Beckham. Yes, contour. So I don't want to, like, contour hard, because I think this is just, like, a very soft look. So I'm just going to give myself a little... Right above where this would start to go in. Kind of bring it up just a teeny bit. Pull it maybe a little bit up here just to have a little color. Let's go under here and we'll see where we're at. You don't need a lot of this. It's not one of those things where you want to have a ton of product. It's just giving people a hint of a shadow. We're always working with light and shadow on top of the fact that we're working with different colors. And I am just bouncing this so that I don't disturb all that color, all the color correcting that we did. And this is just going to give me a tiny little bit of color up here. Just a little, a little forehead action. I'm 
see it's all coming together all coming together all right so the next thing that we're going to want to do is some eyeliner and some eyeshadow so let me grab that i'm going to add a little of the pillow tuck because i got some I was so excited to see this at Sephora. I was like in shock. Because Charlotte always keeps certain things just on her website. And I just never, I don't know. I just don't think to order from her website. I get a little overwhelmed on her website, to be honest. A lot going on. That is a great color. And they may call it matte, but it has a sheen and it's alive and it doesn't look, I don't know, it looks like I'm blushing, which is obviously the point of this. Okay, we are going to put on some mascara, which is really not fun for you to watch. So I'm going to pause this for a second. I think I was going to maybe go back to the Vast Lash today just because we did a really mellow eye. I think like a dramatic lash would be really pretty with this. So we're going to give this a whirl. See, I'm going very, very gently in between the lashes to tight line, but I like going in this direction instead of on the top because I have a very noticeable waterline. And I will show you the difference here. I'm just trying to do this in a very soft way, but it really does make a big difference. Just to show you, I've gone and fairly heavy over here and you'll start to notice when things start not curling the direction that you want them to you're done making sure that the, all of the slashes are getting in there now that kind of dink that I just made and the giant smudge underneath the other eye those all are very easy to get rid of and it's not anything to get alarmed about but don't wipe it while it's wet gotta let it dry so i'm gonna look a little weird for a minute okay and i really try to accentuate the fan out effect so when they start sticking together you're just kind of like done okay that's why I'm still back and forth about this mascara because it's kind of high maintenance. Like the other one, you can just sit there and build on it for like days and it doesn't matter if you put some on later. This one is like, you get one chance, you better grab it or you're going to look like that all day. So I'm just taking some of the lashes apart i have to say like i love this just very rested look i think one of the biggest things that happens when you get to be around 50 your kids are gone you are reinventing yourself you're sort of like you don't have to be at every school event anymore you're not going to oh this is still wet <laughs> you're not going to um you know all of the things that you used to do with your kids and you're sort of like private citizen again and then you decide what you want to do and i decided to do this all right, I'm just going to show you my, my fantastic trick. This side we know is dry. I'm just going to take this and just rub. 
And then what I do is I just take a big fluffy brush and just dust any of that black out of the way. Nice to just be able to pat away those dark circles and all the lack of sleep that you have in your life. Oh, anyway, so now that my son's at school, it's just a really weird, different experience this year. I don't know. He's a, he's a sophomore. And for some reason, I'm having a harder time this year than I did last year. But he loves it. And I know it's exactly where he needs to be. So I suck it up. <laughs> And I try to be the best mom that I can by being supportive of that. Um, I'm loving this eye. What I do want to do is get in and concentrate that, that pearly blue color right in the center there. So I'm taking my trusty rougher 21 and I'm literally going in this way to get right at that lash line to get that nice blue right there where people can see that. Right smack dab in the middle. Literally just patting it because we want that part of it to be the star of the show. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of this with a tiny bit of the peach and just take both of those together on my inner corner, kind of swirling up. So just very, very gently. We just get that really, really pretty peach with the pearly blue. Just beautiful, beautiful makeup. Wow. All right, I'm going to go choose a lip and we are going to wrap this thing up. Okay, now I'm totally excited because I'm finally going to open up the Finding Ferdinand beautiful sparkling limoncello lip gloss from the khaki collection from Finding Ferdinand. And I have been dying to put this on. And I think this is like the perfect lip for the really soft eye and the peachy cheek. This is like a champagne color. Oh my God. It smells, it smells exactly like limoncello. Oh, it's so delicious. I want to see what this looks like. It's supposed to have gold and silver pearl and no real color and I love that it kind of picks up a little of the the peachy pink in my eyes that is a gorgeous lip that is a lip I can love go back with this softer liner Little definition in here. And there, my friends, we have a I don't look as tired as I feel look. I cannot believe that these two products were able to basically fix all the areas of my face, my face that are bothering me. And with this gorgeous Shiseido foundation, just like everything is looking really smooth, really pretty. And the one thing that I am going to do is I am going to powder a little bit because I want to maintain the look of all of this. I'm going to be powdering 
pretty much the center of my face and leaving me out of it just for our last zhuzh to glow. So let's do that now. I'm going to use my Sicily powder. This stuff is, I don't have words. It's perfection. It'll probably take me until like I'm 700 years old to finish it, which is even better. I just have a little bit of powder on here. I'm kind of spreading it out. The first thing that I'm going to do before I go into my under eye is just take my finger and press in case I have any little wrinkles or folds that decided to pop up while I was moving my face around. And this is all you need to do. Just pat a tiniest bit of powder and that will make it not crease and will keep it nice and fresh. I'm going to do like right outside of my nose, middle of my chin, and my forehead. All with that teeny tiny little bit of powder. And I am going to finish with my Lotus Power Powder from Shantikai. And I want to use my favorite brush for this. This brush um, is from Sydney Grace, and I have to say, like, some of the brushes were blue, but some of them are so nice, like this one. And all I'm doing right now is just putting a little bit of finishing powder, buffing it onto my skin, down my neck. Boom. I'm going to hit myself with some setting spray right now. I pretty much have only been using the hourglass. Soft focus. Ah, oh, feels good. It's got nice hydrators in here. And it just sort of like melts everything together. All right. So I love this look. I am so happy that I picked up this palette, this Peru Cristal, and I've seen that this is restocking places, which is why I pulled it out today. I don't like to use stuff on camera that you can't get, but I saw that they've been doing restocks and that's a good thing because there's a lot of people that want to jump on these. Um, you take the last little tiny bit of this. Rub that in. And we are good. Thank you for joining me today. We went through a lot of stuff. I am going to try to link everything in the description box below. But to go over it again, we had the Revitalescence Skin Glow. We used the Finding Ferdinand Lip Gloss. And isn't it just perfect? Like... It gives your lips like something, but it's not, not like too much like that. I was even thinking like I would take a little bit of this Charlotte blush and just kind of get a little bit pink on it. Well, I love that. I love taking 
one type of makeup and having it be in different places, either in your eye look, in your cheeks, but that that's really pretty because it just gives like that, that little hint of pink instead of pink because the eye look is really subtle and pretty and soft and very Chanel. It doesn't look like anything in the pan, does it? And I think that's what happens. We start looking at this stuff and I can't even open this. We start looking at this stuff and we're like, I have those colors. I need, why do I need that? I, I, I honestly think you know what looks good on you. Work with that. I knew that, that the palette that had the green and the yellow and the red was not for me. But this soft one with that, just the pearl. And when I found out that that pearl just had that little hint of blue, I was like, I'm in. So color correcting, huge. Live Tinted is like my new obsession. And I don't say that lightly. I don't gush about products that I don't love, but I will tell you, I am looking at myself right now. I also just did um, another person that was at my house and she was feeling like she was looking really tired. She walked out of here feeling like a million bucks. And that's what makeup should do. It should make us feel better. My nose is itchy from something that's outside. I'm sorry. I, like, I know I keep touching it. Um, but yeah, this is like about having fun. And this is about no rules. And this is not just because I'm doing it this way, you have to do it this way. Whatever makes you happy, do that. Celebrate that. Be that. I am really excited because it's Russia for you today. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to my channel. Be one of the first ones. Bring the bell. Make sure you know when I'm going to be uploading. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on obviously YouTube. I'm going to dip my toes into TikTok, but it's really, I'm just not really a short form content kind of person. I'm sort of a very long form type of person. <laughs> so we'll see what happens, but check out my other socials. And I also have a website, michellebernstein.beauty. The dot beauty takes the place of dot com. So just my name with a U, Michelle Bernstein, dot beauty. And I've written my first blog post there. The second one should be up by the end of the weekend. The topic that I am starting with is ageism. So I think you'll get a lot out of it and you'll get a chance to experience and think about the paradigm that we're in right now with crazy everybody wanting to look younger. Younger's not always better. I, I don't want all those zits back, but I'm, the wrinkles I could do without. But we'll, we'll get there. And there's so many things you can do with makeup. And there are also things where who cares? You have to be happy with how you look. And if you're happy, other people are going to feel your joy. If any of these things sparks joy for you, like I can tell already that this lip gloss is going to be a staple in my life. I love the fact that there is silver and gold and there it they're just perfectly imperfect with the sparkles that are in there. 
I'm going to get a lot of use out of this pillow talk. I'm super happy that this is here. Forget about it with the lip tinted. Awesome. Love my contour. Um, and my powder. We're done, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Please subscribe. Ring the bell. See you in my next upload. Take care. Bye.